If you Google the value of time, some very interesting articles are gonna come up. And I wanna read one of them to you. It's called The Value of Time, this article. If you want to know the value of one year, just ask a student who failed a course. That person will know the value of, of one year. If you wanna know the value of one month, ask a mother who gave birth to a premature baby. If you wanna know the value of one hour, ask the lovers waiting to meet. They'll definitely know the, the value of an hour. If you wanna know the value of one minute, ask the person who just missed the bus. If you wanna know the value of one second, ask the person who just escaped death in a car accident, okay? And if you wanna know the value of one one hundredth of a second, ask the athlete who just won the silver medal in the Olympics, okay? The value of time. And so I remember when I first joined the business and I saw the eight great work habits up on the wall and I'm like, you know, be on time. What kind of organization have I joined where they have to tell you, you know, you got to be on time. Isn't that a given? Doesn't everybody know we've always got to be on time? And as I've discovered inside and outside of the business, not everybody has that really ingrained in their mind, really the value of time and the importance of being on time. So really, I want to pose two questions here, you know, in this session, you know, is there value in being early? And are there consequences to being late? Now, whether this story is true or not, I don't know, but I, I remember hearing this and I've, I've gone on YouTube and I've tried finding the answer to this. Hulk Hogan and the George Foreman grill. Have you heard this story? If you haven't heard the story, here it is. And again, this might be true, it might not be true. I wanna throw that out there, this little asterisk, but, but I believe this to be true. I, I heard this a long time ago and I've, I've even heard uh, Hulk Hogan talking about this in an interview, but, but here goes. So years ago, this manufacturing company wanted two premier athletes to sponsor certain products that were going to go to market. And so they brought in George Foreman and they brought in Hulk Hogan. And Hulk Hogan was supposed to pick first the product that he was going to endorse. And Hulk Hogan showed up late to that meeting. So by default, Foreman had to go first. And so, of course, George Foreman picked the grill. And I think most households have some version of the George Foreman grill. It did unbelievable. And Hulk Hogan got the second pick. And most people probably don't know that it, it went to market. It was called the Hulk Hogan blender. And I don't know if anybody bought the Hulk Hogan blender, but everybody bought the George Foreman grill. So Hulk Hogan knows the value of being on time, no doubt about it. And so interesting story to keep in the back of your mind. And so again, is there value in showing up early and are there consequences of showing up late? I came up with five things that I want to share with you on the importance of being early and again, the consequences of being late. The first thing I have for you is wake up early and go slow. Okay. I don't like waking up with just a, a short runway to get ready to get to work and get into panic mode. No, I like to go really slow. I think most people are surprised how long it takes me to get going in the morning. Like really my morning routine is probably around 90 minutes. I don't know if I've ever timed it, but it's like, really? Like, Jamie, your hair doesn't look that complicated to get ready. And last I checked, you're not putting any makeup on. So what exactly is taking you 90 minutes? I mean, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I'm down on the floor with my dogs. I'm just loving on my dogs. I think that's just a, it's a beautiful way to wake up in the morning and just, you know, love on these beautiful creatures. And so I like to go slow. I like to take my time. I take a long shower. I collect lots of thoughts in the morning. I've, I've even liked a really long commute. I'd listen to great information on the way to work. I'm not jamming to music. I'm listening to Intel, whether it's a book on tape, a podcast, that kind of thing. But I like filling my head with good stuff. And I like thinking about the conversations I'm going to have in the morning. So I like to go slow. And that takes waking up early to go slow. One time I did a little test because my clocks have always been ahead of schedule. I've never really set my clock to be the exact time. I've always set it early. And I'm like, gee, I know my clock is early. So I wonder what would happen if I ever set my clocks late. 
And so I did that once. It lasted one day. And the whole morning, as I knew that that clock was wrong, it was 10 minutes late, I'm just racing around, ripping around, and I'm, I'm a little scattered. And I'm like, you know, I'm never doing that again. All I needed was one test day to, to realize, no, I want to wake up early. I want my clock ahead of schedule. And I like being early. I like going slow. Capture my thoughts. Get ready for the day. Go slow. My second thought is, I want to be respectful of people's time. I want to obviously respect my own time, okay? I mean, I think we all learn as life goes on, the most precious commodity we have is time. I mean, it, it doesn't replenish itself. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I've got, to, I've got to be thoughtful and respectful of my own time, but I also have to respect other people's time. Do I really want other people waiting for me and my agenda? I mean, that really sends a bad message to other people that if I'm showing up late, if I'm constantly tardy, the message I'm sending is, listen, your time doesn't matter. It's all about this guy right here. And I don't think that's the reputation any of us want, that we're disrespectful or unthoughtful of other people. So I want to be respectful of others. I want to respect their time. The last thing I want to do, I don't, I never want to be a no call, no show. Forget about being on time. If you're not, you know, in your calendar and if you're not scheduling things, if somebody's expecting you either on a call or in a meeting and you're a no call, no show, again, to the other people, that could be interpreted as, listen, you just don't respect my time. And again, we just don't want to be disrespectful of others. My third thought is, what's your goal? Now, most people don't think about this, my goal. Like, what's my goal? Like, yeah, what's your goal? As far as being on time goes, what's your goal? Most would say, well, my goal is to be on time. Okay, well, there's a couple different ways to look at this. If your goal is to be on time, okay, there's a good chance you're gonna be late. All it takes is one red light, one, one little hiccup to turn your being on time goal into being tardy. And let's face it, if you're not early, you're late, right? I mean, there, there's only one second of actually being on time. Everything else is either early or it's going to be late. If your goal is to be early, well, then worst case scenario, you'll be on time, right? If your goal is to be late, well, listen, that's just loserville. I don't think anybody sets the goal to be fashionably late, right? So, so it's either, is your goal to be on time or is your goal to be early? I remember having a conversation with somebody about this. He's like, you know, I never thought about that. And from that point forward, this guy was never late. And he was never late because his goal was to always be early. That was always the goal, be early. I want to be 15 minutes early. So then when things are going wrong or that Starbucks line takes a little too long or too many red lights on the way to work, Hey, worst case scenario, I showed up five minutes early instead of the 15, but I'm still on time. So what's your goal? I would just challenge you to shift your paradigm from a goal of being on time to being early. The fourth thing I have is a question. What's the most important meeting of the day? Okay. And you'll hear this from various speakers. I've heard this from John Maxwell Covey. The list goes on. The meeting before the meeting is always the most important meeting, okay? The small group, the dialogue before the meeting is always the most important meeting. So you've got to be early, obviously, if you're going to be part of the meeting before the meeting where things are vetted, things are thought through, and you're walking into any meeting prepared because you're always part of the meeting before the meeting. So remember, that's always the most important meeting. And my last point, just stolen from the best athletes on the planet, okay? From the Tiger Woods to the Michael Jordans, the list goes on. Are you known as the first one in and the last to leave? Isn't that a reputation you want to have at work? You're always the first one in and you're the last one to leave. I mean, as the stories go, when the players for the Chicago Bulls were showing up for practice, MJ was already in a full sweat. Like, oh, am I showing up late? Well, actually, no, I've just been here two hours before our meeting, before our practice took place. The next thing you know, other players started showing up early to be a part of MJ's routine. 
And so I, in, I believe the last dance, it was Doug Collins that said, you know, when you're coaching the Chicago Bulls, you never had to discipline the team to be in shape. Having Michael Jordan on the team, automatically the team is in shape because he's such a relentless competitive athlete. He's there early and eventually everybody's there early to really get the practice and conditioning in before the practices ever start. So I want to be known and I want to raise my kids to be, listen, you want to be the first one in and you want to be the last one to leave. You're putting in more work. There, there's an old quote, uh, I believe, from Thomas Edison where he said, you know, the first 40 hours of work per week are for survival. Everything after that is for success. So again, you might only get paid for 40 hours, but the, the pre-40 hours and the post-40 hours, the extra time, those are hours getting banked in the success bank. 40 hours is for survival. Everything after that is for success. So don't be shy to go that extra mile. There's never traffic on the extra mile. You want to be the first in, the last to leave, put in that extra work. And that's part of being on time. It's really being early. So those are my thoughts for you when it comes to being on time. I think we all want to be known as somebody who's a, an early riser, somebody who's there to put in the work, somebody who's there who's committed and ready to get the job done and just really get the respect of your fellow teammates. So again, those are my thoughts for you here today.